Good evening and welcome. Welcome to the, uh, where are we, April 6th, 2015 school committee meeting. Uh, we have a light agenda tonight, but a, a really nice agenda that we're going to start with. Uh, first things first, is there public input that isn't on the agenda this evening? Seeing none, that's wonderful. We can get into uh, our really, really welcomed guests this evening. Uh, we're going to start with our friends, the Gibbs family, who are presented this evening a donation from Samantha's Harvest. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. It's been a long time since I was on this side of the table. I think the first time we made a donation when Sam was a very little girl and Mrs. Webb was on the committee then yeah. um, before the high school got renovated. So this is nice to be back again. First off, Mr. Crusoe, congratulations on a very nice run. Oh, thank you very thank much. And thank you for your service thank you. to the town. You're well, the one who, uh, you? you wrote me into this, yes, so I, I did. have you to thank. <laughs> I'm out of your will, but, um, you know, it thank will be you, fun. Sir, I appreciate it. Yeah. You'll enjoy it. You will enjoy. I'm sure. But I do miss it. I do miss all of you. But, um, so we're here tonight to make our annual donation for Samantha's Harvest, and Rob and I had, um, oh, sorry, I'm, Le I'm Lisa Gibbs. My husband, Rob, and Samantha. Sorry, I should not make, that's very presumptuous to just have people think. It's okay, Mom. <laughs> so, um, we're here to make our annual donation from Samantha's Harvest, and we had a conversation with Dr. Doherty um, about our thoughts about what the donation could be. Because after donating for so many years, you just want to check in and just make sure that the visions are aligned um, Samantha's Harvest mission, as you all probably know, is to um, enhance the lives of people with Down syndrome, and we support different organizations locally and statewide that do that, and certainly Reading Public Schools has been a leader in that, and we just wanted to check in with Dr. Doherty and, you know, see what was happening, what was going on, and certainly under Mrs. Wilson's leadership, we look forward to supporting her initiatives and hearing what she's got planned so um, our donation never comes with any strings it never has and it never will but we um, have we've always agreed that it will be set aside for professional development for general education and special education staff um, to learn how to better educate students who have down syndrome in an inclusive setting. So that being said, I think it's important to note that a lot of the professional development that the educators are sent to, while it is professional development for educators who work with students who have Down syndrome, it is really best practices in teaching all students. It's not specific to just students who have Down syndrome. So I want to make that clear that it's for everybody as you know, we hope that all teachers will benefit from it. So with that, Samantha, did you want to say anything? No. I think you're right back. Moving right along. That's Dr. Doherty, and then go shake everybody's hand. So we have a $3,500 donation tonight to give you towards that. So thank you all for your support and our endeavors. Thank you. Careful of the wires. Mrs. Gibbs, thank you so much for the years of generosity. It's much appreciated. Thank you both. It is our pleasure. Thanks. All right. Do you have to make a motion? Yeah. If you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm boss. Yeah, Mr. Vice Chair. Just move to accept a donation in the amount of $3,500 from Samantha's Harvest to be used to support Student Services Department professional development. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? Uh, other than sincere thanks and gratitude? Thank you. All in favor? And the motion carries 6-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'd love to stay because we know you have a great agenda, but Sam has to go. We have the hay. So <laughs> yes. thank you. Thank you all very yep. much. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, Good night. Sam. Bye, Daddy.
Moving along with the good news. We have the Reading Education Foundation here tonight uh, to present an amazing donation. As you guys come on up, please, Mrs. Webb, did you want to introduce? Um, yeah, I just want to just thank the Reading Education Foundation and highlight the fact that the foundation has been making major contribution to the school district for, I think, as ref for the last five years. Is it five I years think about now? four. Four. Yeah. And um, certainly they are an organization that does a lot within our community to help raise those funds. So we appreciate all the work that the REF board members do in organizing those big events like Festival of Trees and the um, Spring Imagination Celebration, which is coming up fairly shortly, mm -hmm. and participating in the Taste of, uh, Taste of Reading and uh, being you know, part of a group that benefits from that. And I uh, really appreciate all the hard work. And there's lots of volunteers on the board as well as sort of your super volunteers. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're really excited today to hear about the grants. There's some really wonderful grants that um, are being met with that enormous check that we're about to <laughs> have. So I'll let you guys introduce that. So uh, hi, thank you for having us. Um, I'm Christine Kelly, um, president of Reading Education Foundation. This is Nancy Dieselman, who has been leading up our grant committee, and she's going to talk in depth and answer any questions you have about some of the grants that we're funding this year. We also have some of our board members here. I'd like to take a moment to introduce them. Uh, we have Christine Downey, who is our um, I'm secretary. I'm like, is she vice president? <laughs> She's our secretary. She's on our executive board. We have two new board members here, Janet Faulkner and um, Laura O'Neill, who have both been working on the grant committee this year. We're happy to have them as new board members. Some of you may realize we have a board of 12 members. It's open. If anyone is interested, they can go on our website. We're at uh, readingef.org, and we're always looking for new people to help us. We also do have dozens of super volunteers who help us at our two major annual events. One is the festival full of trees which was very successful um, and we had so much help in the community and it's really become a beloved activity in the holiday season right around Christmas time and our second major fundraiser is coming up you're right Elaine um, our imagination celebration this year will be on May 2nd and that's a lovely gala we're once again hosting it at 32 Lowell Street which is the Northeast Ballet School in that beautiful stone church next to Town Hall mm -hmm. and that is open to everyone we will be sending out emails reminding the entire Reading school community about that event but it's certainly open to anyone in Reading um, and we're also doing once again an online auction which will start the week after April vacation and run for two weeks and we have everything from day trips to special outings with some of the school committee members um, <laughs> activities in the schools restaurants hotel stays Disney passes you name it um, we really do try to secure some great items and we get all the funds for that so that's really great this year we're um, trying a second year of another fundraiser and we're hoping that it's really going to take off this year a lot of communities have been involved in a teacher tribute program at the big at the end of the school year um, room parents and we're actually been making the rounds at all the PTO meetings and talking with the PTOs about co-hosting the teacher tribute program mm -hmm. so there'll be more coming on that and that will also be sent out in an email but we're really hoping um, as you said we have a generous check unfortunately we still can't fund all the great grants mm -hmm. that we get nominated um, to fund and that that's ultimately our goal is to if we could support all the fabulous grants every year that would be awesome mm -hmm. um, we're still not at that point yet so our fundraising really depends on the generosity of the Reading people and they really are so generous to us so I'm going to turn this over to Nancy she's going to talk a little bit about the grant cycle about the grants and then if you have any questions for either of us or anyone from our board would be happy to answer them Great. So this year, uh, REF received over $53,000 worth of grant requests, and we are going to award $40,117.07 in nine grants this year. Uh, one at the high school level, three at the middle school, five at the middle school level, and three at the elementary school level. So I'll just give you an example at each school level so you get a flavor for <coughs> the type of work that um, is going to be done at each school. Probably the most exciting one that we got is from the Reading High School, from the Rockets Help Desk. And the Rockets Help Desk is this student-run organization that provides technology solution and integration solutions 
for student and faculty. And it's a bunch of students that will help people um, individually or they will, um, go, they will go and help a group of people who are trying to work on a project and are having problems with the technology part of their presentation or, um, or what have you. And right now they have an overwhelming demand that they can't meet. So we are helping out by providing um, software, hardware, and a number of different accessories so that they can meet this demand. At the middle school level, uh, one of the guarantees is called Eating with a Conscience. <laughs> and it's a Coolidge eighth grade read, um, whole <coughs> class read, where the student's going to develop an understanding of the plight of the migrant worker and exactly where, how our food um, gets to our table and where it comes from. And along with the read, there's interdisciplinary <coughs> projects throughout their, throughout their curriculum <coughs> that correspond to this read. And the nice thing about it is when they're done, the, the entire set of books and everything that they've done can be passed on to Parker or to any other teachers that want to use it. And lastly, at the elementary school level, um, we have a professional development program called Numeracy is the New Literacy. And this is a, um, a focus for K through 3. And we have some teachers in the district that went to um, a wonderful workshop, and they thought that this, this particular workshop was fantastic in teaching um, teachers a new way to present material to very young students. And our grant will support 20 to 30 teachers getting this two-day workshop. And it, we consider it kind of a pilot, a large pilot program where if after this, um, this workshop and they, um, they use the, the techniques in the classroom, if that group of teachers along with the administration feel that it's something <coughs> worthwhile, we're hoping that it gets extended to the entire faculty at the elementary school level. Um, and in closing, um, we, we did get $53,000 worth of grants this year, but last year we had all, over 80. So we, had a, we did see a big decrease this year, and we're just you know, hoping that um, um, the administration keeps you know, it in the teachers' minds that, that we're out there and there is that money, and we're on our, on our other side, we're trying to raise more money so that we can fund more, but we also don't want to see their interest um, decline either. And just as a final note, um, if you look at how much REF and the Technology Foundation before us, which we kind of morphed into, have raised since the inception, right now we're at 465000 So next year at this time, we'll be able to say that we've gone over the half million dollar mark. Wow. wow. And that's it. I have a few copies here of all of the grants. And you can take a look at them. They're also on our website. But if you would like to pass them around, Oh, are they in the book? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Were there questions from the committee? Looking. I no. knew uh, I knew that you had begun awarding gifts because uh, Mrs. Gallagher from the high school, who is, <laughs> uh, her and Mrs. Janowski, I think, are the only two people I follow on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was so quick to point out and how grateful she was and about Rocket Help Desk. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was exciting to see her energy level. I, I just think um, one of the things that might be worth it to talk a little bit about is the um, how you guys have people demonstrate the grant. So it's not just that you're reading a piece of paper. So I know the grant committee does a lot in terms of de or defending the grant. Um, you know, using having that be part of the process, I think, is important um, part of the process. So. I don't know if the board members know that you guys actually do that. It takes an enormous amount of time. Um, and the teachers, obviously, are defending the grant, and board members are sort of there in person to hear the grants and be able to ask questions. And so it's an important part of the decision process is that firsthand dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mr. Robinson. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, you said you had 53,000 in, in requests. I think it's extremely impressive that uh, you were almost able to, to meet that, uh, that and you know, should really be proud of that. I mean, it, uh, even though it was 80 last year, 50, but that's that's significant. Uh, not many people got no for an answer. <laughs> that's great. This is Brasky. Thank you so much. And the only thing that I'd like to add for the public who might be watching this is that so often your grants <coughs> start as a sort of a creative, innovative idea of an educator and expand to touch the whole community. So two examples off the top of my head, the ukuleles. A teacher wanted to do introduce strings at the elementary level, and it worked great. The next year, you were able to fund it for the whole elementary system in our district. 
Um, I spoke with one of the teachers who took that math professional development for K through three, and she raved about it and said, I just want to teach math all day now. Um, so now she had that great experience. You're expanding that great experience with a plan for everyone to get that. So I think it's a real opportunity for um, to empower teachers in our district to be innovative and creative. And then for that, for that little amazing bit of creativity and innovation to start expanding the whole district. So it's really impressive. I think that's part of our mission. Um, I know John has used the term research and development, but you know, as schools, I'm an educator as well, and we just don't often have that money. You know, teachers do go to um, workshops. They go, they read things. Now with Twitter, we're all reading articles all the time. You hear these great ideas. You go to your administrator, knock on the door, and they're like, my budget's spent for the year, and that's everywhere. So it's really nice as an education foundation to be able to say, yeah, we got that. And we really see that. And the grant committee really does do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. They talk to educators. They talk to the educators who apply for it. They talk to administrators. They talk to Craig. They talk to John. Mm -hmm. um, they really try to do their homework so that we are spreading. I mean, $40,000 is a lot of money, and we spend a lot of time fundraising for it. But it's not a lot of money in the sense that we have to be really prudent in the way we spend it. And we want to try, like everything in Reading, we want to try to get the most bang for our buck on that. And I do think that I'm really proud of Reading Education Foundation because we really keep our overhead very, very, very small. Mm -hmm. And everything we earn really just goes right back into this grant process. And that's really, all of the board members are philosophically really tied to that. And it is, it, we're really, I'm very proud to be part of a group that really feels that way. Mm -hmm. And I do think once we, you know, next year at our Imagine nation celebration, the half million dollar mark. That's something to be really proud of because we are a little sort of mom and pop education foundation. We don't have any employer, like no one's employed by this. You know, we're, we work really well with the school department and they really help us. They do all the buying for us and the purchasing, all of that comes through them, which a lot of education foundations don't have that option, which is why we can keep our overhead um, so small. And we have so many benefactors in the community, from the Rotary Club to people who do our insurance for us, um, to our auditor who does all the tax work for free, Brian Crosby, <coughs> uh, on Haven Street. Um, just people in Reading are just so, so generous. And they believe in our educational system. And they know that the Reading schools are really good and really great. And we just, we all want the same thing. We want to try to give the educators all the support that they need to be the excellent educators that we know they, they are. Mm -hmm. And with that little push, with that little extra, with that little training, with more supplies in their hands, it just makes the whole process work so well. So although, you know, we're very happy with $40,000, that $13,000 that was left on the floor, we don't love that either. Mm -hmm. um, if we had $80,000 and we only found it half, that would hurt us too. <laughs> so so uh, if you're out in the Reading community, we're looking to raise more money. So. Um, Anyway, our grant committee does a great job with that. Dr. Doctor. I can't let you, I know we're always time, conscious of time, but I can't let you leave without saying both a personal and a communal thank you because I have been a volunteer who has applied to you mm -hmm. for funds for community events, Rosalyn Wiseman, Musical Healing After the Holocaust, and some other things, and you have made those events happen and I have to say I know specifically in many ways how those events have changed people's lives because you put me in such a good light that people come and they tell me their stories, but it's really you that made them happen. And we have a student who is minoring in Holocaust education now. We have other students, the AWOD group, who perpetuates the lessons of Rosalind Wiseman and looking at the be a girl box and be a boy box. And I, I just think that you have enabled us to rope in passions and share them with both students and other people in the community. And that's priceless and it's ongoing. So thank you very much. Thank you. A motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Move to accept the donation in the amount of $40,117.17 <laughs> from the Reading Education Foundation as part of the grant program. A second? Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? It's seven cents, not 17. <laughs> I don't want you to have to re-vote it. Nine. 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 That's okay. Nine. You got it. 
Linda, that number. We'll still take it. <laughs> we're still 6 0. Are we not? I'm not even re voting, we're 6 0. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We're going to adjourn for 30 say, seconds because we, we want a picture yeah, with that picture big Picture with the big chat. Thank Quick, you. Uh, we're on a schedule here, people. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, this is a ball game. I wanted to let the committee know of a workshop that I attended two Saturdays ago. It was put on by the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. The presenter was Jack Schneider, who is a professor of education from the College of the Holy Cross. For the past year, he's been doing some really interesting work at the Somerville Public Schools. Um, the, the general gist of question that the Somerville Schools was asking, um, sort of the theme, was if you don't measure what you care about, you'll end up caring about what you measure. And it really had to do with standardized test scores. So he's embarked with a team on behalf of the public schools in Somerville and starting at the ground up talking to parents, teachers, administrators to say what does a good school look like? And then secondarily, how can we measure that? And then how can we communicate that out to the public? They're keeping the MCAS scores, the student growth percentiles particularly, but they've got another 20 to 30 measures that they're looking at. They're creating a database, they're creating a website that anyone in the public can access. Um, so the reason I want to bring it to the committee's attention is twofold. One, it was very well attended, and the overwhelming response from school committee members from all over eastern Massachusetts and one guy from New Hampshire who were in the room was incredibly positive. People were nodding their head and saying, this is a great thing, this is a great thing to embark on. Um, the second thing is they're spinning off, they're hoping to spin off a nonprofit and do this with other districts. So it's just something to keep our ears to the ground on. It's a really interesting thing that they're trying to do. Um, and I really liked their approach of starting with what do we care about as a community and then how do you measure that? They're using technology really effectively. Um, a lot of student and parent surveys are part of it. Very well designed surveys. They've hired an expert to design well developed surveys. Um, they found that by using text messages, for instance, they get an 85% response rate from students. So they're, they're doing some really <coughs> cool, innovative things, and I do hope that what they're doing um, continues to expand because it's really interesting. I wanted to bring that to the committee's attention. Thank you very so, much. Thank you. Thanks. Looking to my right, coming over to my left, Dr. Doxer. Uh, the Human Relations Advisory Committee met last too. Thursday. It's now definite. We're going to be presenting the portraits that were painted by Rob Surrett on April 14th, Tuesday, April 14th, from 6.20 to 6.30 in the midst of the District-wide Arts Festival. So there'll be bands playing before us and singing after us, and we hope that people will come and um, students will be presenting the portraits and the role models that will then hang both in the library and we're hoping that we'll also have the ones that will be hanging in the town hall and the selectmen's room. Uh, but if not, th those will be presented at a selectman meeting as well. Where is that event? Excuse me. It's here at the PAC. Okay. So uh, the District Arts Festival will be, since I see there are no students here, um, we'll be presenting the artwork done by students across the district, so it will be all different kinds of art, both the performing arts and the um, visual. visual arts. Thank you. And Main Street will be full. I've been to it before, and it goes from one end to the other. And it's really a wonderful opportunity for people, whether you have students in the school system or not, to really see what's being done by our very talented students. Um, so that's my report. Human. And we're still looking for members if you're interested. Mrs. Webb. Actually, I, I was not able to attend the Rocasa meeting, and I, but Mr. Robinson is a liaison and Dr. Darty also attends, so I don't know if there was anything to report, but at least it's important to note that the um, school committee has pretty good representation. I was too sick to attend. They came oh. to me. But maybe there was something. Yeah, we, uh, we broke up into it was actually ver there were quite a few people missing I think that right. night uh, ill or whatever uh, we broke up into groups and discussed uh, our roles on the committee and our roles in the community and how to reach out and, and in our personal lives as well and how to reach out to people to educate them more about our CASA so that that's yeah, pretty much and then there was the Chris Heron event this week that and the Chris Heron <coughs> event was, uh, that Thursday, was Thursday night, night. I, I did not attend yeah, that I, I went to the 
I was he was just here three years ago when I was at that. I couldn't go this week. I don't know if anyone else was there. I did speak to several parents who attended. They said it was as powerful as ever. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful that he w was able to, to be here. Great. I actually forgot to say one more date. I apologize. <coughs> at our meeting on Thursday, which was unfortunately the same time as the Chris Heron event, so I was at the Human Relations Advisory Committee, <coughs> um, the Winchester Multicultural Network <coughs> attended, and they invited us to attend um, any of their presentations that they're going to be doing and so I will be posting those on the Martin Luther King Day website so that people will be aware I know that there are a lot of people on that already feel free to share that Facebook page <coughs> and I'll be putting the information out on April 11th they'll be doing a workshop for um, planning around diversity in communities and they are going to have a speaker who has was one of the founders, I believe, of the Visions program. So it should be very exciting. And that's all day on April 11th, Saturday. So if you're interested in that, you can contact me, and I'll give you more information. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. Reports from the administration this evening. Dr. Doherty? I do not have a report. I have one, uh, two minor things. What's that? Um, first is um, we had expected to have their, our final opinion of cost on the retaining wall mm -hmm. last week, and they were still a little bit delayed with some of the <coughs> snow, the final melting, if you will. Um, we expect to have a final opinion of cost by April 15th, um, so we can communicate with you uh, at the meeting on the 17th um, with what the final amount is. Uh, there was a range that was given, and I don't think that they put an amount in the warrant, or did they put the ceiling in the warrant? I'm trying to recall. They put it. They did put an amount in. Mm -hmm. And you all voted on an amount at the last meeting. Um, and then I just wanted to provide a brief update on the modular bid. Um, it is public. Um, we have had a number of vendors take it. Um, we have the recommended, the strongly recommended walkthrough this Thursday, and bids are due back to us um, the following Thursday, the 16th. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep moving forward with that. And right now you have. Uh, a meeting scheduled for that Friday morning. At 7? At 7. Which Friday is that? The 17th. 17th. Hmm. Yeah, because I have a, another meeting that morning at like 11, so the earlier the better. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on into uh, continued business, we have an FY15 budget status update. What can you like to do? Yeah. Um, so included in your packet is a stat is an update as of um, March 31st. Um, it is changed um, somewhat since the last update that was provided for, uh, as of January 31st. Um, uh, starting at the top, there's a we continue to have some um, some staff out for extended period of time, and that's why you see an increase uh, in the deficit that we're forecasting for health services. Um, I know Ms. Delai typically in the June time frame, late May, early June time frame, would come to the school committee with recommendations for transfers um, among, between budgets to kind of correct any deficit. So we're going to wait a little bit longer because this is still, uh, I'm a conservative person by nature, so this is, it, I, I don't think it's going to be that high, but I wanted to, you know, conservatively forecast it out. Um, uh, there's not a lot of changes in the other cost centers since um, since the January 31st um, update that we provided. Um, the deficit that you see in Eaton is still the result of the three paras that we hired for the, the larger kindergarten classroom sizes. Um, going down into the special needs area, we did um, we did fine tune some of these things. Uh, Carolyn and I met uh, last week. And at this point, we do have a placeholder in the budget. Uh, so I have forecasted that we're going to spend um, about $300,000 of this year's funds to prepay next year's tuitions to set us up for a successful FY16. Um, and even with that $300,000, we're still forecasting that we have about $295,000 left in the special education. Um, you know, without going into too much detail, there are a number of um, cases right now that um, I'm going to use the wrong terminology here, that are being resolved. resolved. That's the best way. 
author. So who's it? Mediated. Oh, mediated. Mediate. Thank you. That was the word I was yeah. searching for. There are a number of um, cases that are being mediated that we hope to have resolved. So that two hundred ninety-five thousand um, will will get eaten into if those uh, are resolved. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's there's a little bit of change. Um, between schools when it comes to special needs. Um, when we developed the FY15 budget, we had uh, use of revolving funds for tuitioned in students. And um, the students are not exactly in the schools that we thought they were going to be in, so we just kind of adjusted. So we till, still took the same amount in terms of offset from the revolving fund. It's just tweaked between schools. So if you were to compare the January 31st to this one, that, that's the subtle differences that you'd see there. Um, Skipping down to the town building maintenance, um, I do forecast a deficit there. Um, I think you're all aware that, that we have a, a significant gas invoices for the DPW garage, and there is, um, there is a, 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 motion, or a warrant with the, for the town meeting to um, get an additional $50,000. So that will m cover that deficit uh, if that is approved at town meeting. But I wanted to show it. Um, Without, without assuming that that was going to get approved. Thank you. I don't know if there are any questions. Sure. Mr. Robinson. Uh, Martha, you, you said we're going to prepay uh, under the special needs. When do we do that at the, I hope, on June 30th? That's when we do it, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's just because we, otherwise it would go into free cash if we. Correct. Thanks. That's one of the few things under Mass General Law that you can prepay. Um, because of the, the volatility of special education <coughs> expenditures, we are allowed to prepay tuitions. Mrs. Borowski. Um, the I'm looking at the, the final column, the under or over budget. It looks like Coolidge has a pretty big surplus relative to everyone else, which are kind of in the tens of thousands of dollars. Is there a particular reason for that? The, uh, are you looking at the 178,000? Yes, that's what I'm looking um, at. They had significant turnover savings. Okay. And then at, what happens over the course of the year is people go out on leaves and sometimes they extend into unpaid leaves. Um, and that's, that's tough to gauge sometimes. So um, these numbers are a little better in terms of fine tuning than the January numbers. Okay. So. But staff turnover is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They, had, they had significant savings in staff turnover. Thank you. More questions? Questions from the audience? Questions from that guy over there? No? Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much, Martha. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Um, under new business, um, this will be fun. Let's do last day of school, Dr. Doherty. Absolutely. That'll be fun. Yeah. Look at the smile. The track and the fields have been shoveled. Yay. There will be no more snow. <laughs> Thank you to the uh, girls and boys track team for coming out yeah. Saturday morning. And their parents. Al, mostly the kids, uh, in shoveling that in, and the parents. But that was a, a great deal of work. And the track it, looks great. It looks great. <laughs> With no damage. Yeah. So. Even better. It's awesome. Yes. Um, this is actually the time of year that you always vote on the last day of school. So I want to keep it consistent because we're not going to have any more <coughs> snowstorms resulting in lost days of school. Um, right now, the last day of school is scheduled for June 25th, which ironically is the same last day of school for the last two years. Um, so um, I would recommend to the committee that you vote tonight for the last day of school being on the 25th, which is a Thursday. Mr. Robinson? <coughs> Move to accept the superintendent's recommendation to set June 25th, 2015 as the official last day of school. Second. Questions? I don't see any questions. Go ahead. Actually, it's, it's sort of funny that it ended up on a Thursday, whereas where we were being asked to plan it for a Friday, we couldn't plan it exactly, but ended up pretty close. Just an observation. <laughs> That's a good observation. Thank you. <laughs> Further? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion carries 6-0. I guess that wasn't as much fun as I thought, Dr. Dirty, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't terrible, I guess. Um, In some districts, it is terrible. I bet. I bet. Uh, I guess, uh, Dr. Dirty, under new business, we'll go through uh, the superintendent's evaluation process. I know you're going to be presenting an update on goals this evening. Sure. So, <coughs> um, in your packet, 
There is a document that should be familiar to you. You saw it in November. You um, proved the, the goals. What, what I've done is two things. One is um, in the column, uh, the column on the right, I've given you a status report on each of those items. And then at the end of each goal, I have provided some updates on the main areas of that goal. Um, essentially, these are the, this is the first year of the two-year goals. These are essentially two-year goals. Um, although every year you do vote on a new set of goals, but you will see that you know a lot of this will be um, similar to next year. The first goal, um, which is the which is called the student learning goal under the regulations. Um, the learning and teaching goal, we've made a tremendous amount of progress in this area this year, uh, thanks to the leadership of Mr. Martin and the teacher leaders in the district. Um, some of the highlights include the, uh, the in implementation of the professional learning communities uh, as part of the new structures and in the collective bargaining agreement that was uh, established. Um, we began work with the Northeast DSAC this year, um, primarily with Joshua Eaton, although they have provided support to us in, in other schools as well. There has been a task force that has been working at Joshua Eaton, led by Craig Martin and um, Sherry Van Darken uh, as co-chairs, who have been uh, guiding that work, and they continue to meet. Um, each school has done a uh, what's been called the um, the school effectiveness survey that the DSAC provided. So that's been happening. Uh, we have been in the process of implementing our new elementary math curriculum, which is in its second year, and our middle schools are also implementing new curriculum to share in math uh, through material that we received at no cost through uh, Pearson, I believe, right? It's Pearson. And at the high school, that's actually been happening as well. So we received all of that at no cost. Um, Mrs. Wilson has been working with uh, Walker Associates, um, and has, they've been doing an analysis of our special education services. We hope to have a report by May. Um, we have been we have formed an IT governance team. The, the focus of the governance team primarily has been park implementation, but now that will continue to expand into other areas. So that, that has been put in place. District determined measures, which have been developed by the PLCs and worked on all year, will be continued to be implemented. Um, so that, that primarily is goal one. And then I have provided a lot of backup descriptions in the narrative after the goal one in the different areas. Do you want me to wait or just keep going to goal two? Keep going. Keep going. Goal two. Um, goal two is the professional practice goal, which is capacity building. Um, a lot of this is developing our teacher leaders in the district through a variety of means, one uh, being facilitative leadership. We've brought in Jean Thompson Grove, um, who has provided a lot of trainings for our curriculum leaders, our administrators, um, and other teacher leaders in the use of protocols and facilitative leadership to run the PLCs, um, which has been going very well. We also have a professional development committee that was formed this year, again, as part of the collective bargaining agreement to um, provide uh, professional development opportunities and to get <coughs> feedback on those professional development opportunities and then based on that feedback, um, tweaking the professional development opportunities so that they're more differentiated for our teachers. So that has been happening. We did have a survey that went out in January, which the professional development committee has been reviewing and has made recommendations on how to improve uh, both the PLC structures and other professional development that has been going on in the district. The uh, PLCs I already mentioned. 
Can I just interject? Of course. <clears throat> I just want to say it's very powerful to see, having now, it's a year for me on the committee, having heard a year ago about what some of the concerns were and the desires were, to see some of the progress that's been made, the ways that um, you and the administration have listened. And I just wanted to highlight that because with this, the PLC, um, the sorry, the professional development work, that was something the teachers really wanted to improve the quality of the professional development they got. And now they're a part of that process. And I think that speaks really powerfully of this assessment process and, and how it helps the students and the staff here. So I just wanted to make that a statement on that. Continuing on in goal two, um, we have been also working with the DESE. Um, there was a workshop that Ms. Borowski, I believe it was just you and I attended uh, at the conference, the MASC conference, yes. on the planning for success. Um, we have had three sessions with the DESE on uh, providing um, an action plan, a district action plan for our goals, which has gone very, very well. Um, we hope to be putting the final touches on that. Really now what we're planning for is for next year, since this year is almost over, but it will give us a really good head start for next year. Um, so that is in process, and we have uh, the district leadership team has been meeting with Laurie Likas from the DESE on that. Um, um, oh, in the educator evaluation, um, we, uh, under the new, under the regulations, one of the things that all school districts are doing this year is including a staff and serve, a staff and student survey component. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at no cost, we were able to secure the services through the DESE of Panorama Education. Um, who I believe some of us did here present at the MASC conference. Um, in January, the staff completed feedback uh, on administrators. And in the January, February timeframe, staff, uh, students completed surveys, feedback on staff. Um, what made the implementation of the um, student piece a little tricky was um, the snow uh, and the logistical scheduling of students to go in and take online surveys. This was for grades 3 through 12. So the, actually today, the staff got their feedback um, from Panorama. Um, so they are, they, they've been getting that. They, today they got an email from Panorama on their, their feedback. Um, so uh, we, were also, we are, all, are also going to get aggregate reports for schools and for the district, um, which we will be taking a look at as well. What, Question. Mr. Oh. Mrs. Webb? I was going to ask what percentage of students participated at the various grade levels, or was it? Was the majority the, of the students presented, sorry. well over the majority. Okay. So it was to be 100 percent, but you didn't quite make that. Do no, grades do. three through eight, that did happen. Yeah. At the high school, there was a, for some reason, there was a glitch. Every teacher had a survey. Mm -hmm. um, students did participate, but not every student participated. Um, we, we, you know, we gave specific directions to Panorama, and I think they misinterpreted the directions. So not every student participated in a survey, but every teacher did get feedback, okay. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mr. Knight? Similar question. I was going to ask that, but also the staff rate of response. How was that? The, the staff rate of response? How did the staff respond to these surveys? Percentage of people? Percentage mean, of people all of the staff question. had the opportunity to give feedback to the, to the administrators. Is that right. what you're asking? You know, I'm asking how many, do you know how many actually responded? What was the percentage? Like, it, was, say, it was pretty high. But every staff had, it was, it was well over 80%, but every <coughs> staff had the opportunity to give feedback. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just questioning how many did actually respond. No, it was a strong percentage. Okay. Would you like me to continue? Sure. Okay. Um, moving on to goal three, which is the implementation of, of MTSS. Um, 
we've, we've been moving along. Uh, as you know, we got the grant in the, uh, the fall, uh, which we have been in the process of implementing the five-year grant. Um, this year, a couple of things have been going on. The buildings have been securing their building leadership teams, um, which are the ones that will oversee the implementation of the MTSS process in the buildings. Uh, we just completed the development of a district-wide MTSS team, which will be members from each building leadership team um, on that. Each building has now done what is called the first tiered fidelity instrument reading, which is where they are as a building in the implementation of the first tier of MTSS. Um, the instrument actually measures all three tiers, but we're not at the third tier yet. So this year we're just measuring the tier one piece. Um, so based on that is how you then develop an action plan on how to continue in your building, on how to move forward with the implementation. So um, each building is also taking a look at some key data points that um, that each that we've been, we've established as a as a district which helps move forward with the, uh, the implementation process. Um, that is the big piece that's been going on um, with this goal. There are some things that are on hold. Um, the YRBS was implemented, was administered in January and February, and we usually get those results towards the end of the summer. Um, and we'll make that presentation in the, at that time. Are there any questions on goal three that you would like me to? Chris. Oh, question nine, yes. Just the, the, the questioning um, number six. Um, the bullying prevention plan will be reviewed and updated. What's the say it's going to be fully implemented during the 15, 16 school year. So I'm assuming you're going to review that between now and the end of the school year? We're going to review that between now and the start of the next school year. Okay. Who will be in that? Who will be, who will be reviewing that? Uh, that would be under Craig. Craig. Who would have, who would be under Craig? Who would be working with Craig on that? Uh, Craig would be working with administrators and teachers. Okay. No parents? On that plan. We certainly can include parents. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Thank you. Would you like me to move to goal four? <coughs> yes, please. Okay. Um, goal four is addressing space and program needs. Um, some of these things have been moving along quite nicely. Um, do have a, a working group, which right now we've, we've put on hold um, as we start implementing the, the modular process, which will be completed by the end of the summer. Um, one area that we've not started yet, but I think is something that the working group will look at is Killam, mm -hmm. um, and how Killam may fit into the overall space needs plans. Killam is <coughs> the only school that has not had any major work done to it, other than the infrastructure pieces of a roof and windows. So I think that's something that, that mm -hmm. eventually we're going to have to take a look at. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece is the getting the, the feedback from the community on the, at the different levels of what we would like to see, similar to what you were actually just saying earlier, mm -hmm. Mr. Borowski. And so there's different ways we can do this, but one, one piece that I think we're going to do between now and the end of the school year is hold forums at probably not every school, but at every level, at least every level, and asking them those questions and getting feedback that way. And then from there, creating a, a more district-wide community survey for the community to react to based on the feedback I get at those forums. Um, to really talk about, you know, what is it that we want the Reading Public Schools to look like um, what do we want to see at each level? Um, what is working at each level right now? What are areas that we need to strengthen at each level? And start at that 
with more of a discussion and then go to a, a survey. And then I think that will give us a lot more data as we, we go into the summer and into the fall. So that's going to be happening um, this spring. John. Yes, absolutely. Uh, just something I noticed there. Uh, under number five, page 26. Yep. Uh, increase steam up oh, that should be stem no steam actually oh <laughs> sorry They're it is steam. that was me i thought of a stem no because <laughs> the a in arts i got you yep okay. yeah oh, tricky <laughs> important <laughs> well thank you no you're welcome Oh, this is what? Um, I just want, just looking in that same area, the list, the, um, you know, certificate programs at the high school, I think is a really interesting dialogue and something that a lot of high schools are, you know, leveraging some of the opportunities with their STEM programs, actually, to create um, certificate pieces related specifically to the, some of the STEM programs that they're able to do. So I know, um, yeah, you know, Gloucester has a great um, so SolidWorks certificate um, for their students, so I think that's a uh, that it'd be very interesting to see what sort of the community feedback is on along those no, lines. No, it would be. Um, that I, I I know of several school districts that go beyond STEM. Also, they do mm -hmm. global studies. Oh yeah. Uh, they do a, a fine arts uh, yeah, um, certificate program, area, business and technology. I mean, there's mm -hmm. you can really go into a lot of directions with this. Yeah. But yes, yeah, STEM engineering, definitely computer science. And then the fifth goal is communication. So I've um, been doing a lot of investigatory work uh, for the audit piece, and I do have three uh, quotes, which we're looking at right now, um, to get that, that piece moving forward. Um, I know that something that the committee has um, had some interest in is the district governance program. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and that is something that we can, with the committee's permission, we can look into. Uh, the, there are five two-hour sessions as part of that program that MASC runs. Um, you can choose to do all five or um, a menu approach of some of the five, and that would be something that the committee... I think all five. Would, of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I would recommend to the committee <laughs> is that you bring in MASC first to give you an overview of yeah. the five, Could and then you. you can make a decision on which one or ones you would like to do. <laughs> Fine. That would be a um, that would be an excellent summer project <coughs> for the committee if that's mm -hmm. something that they would. Uh, so. <coughs> so that's where we're questions at with the goals. Question. I'm assuming that the governance program will be done on the open committee. Um, open meeting format as be. well? Yes, that, absolutely. It has to be. That's great. Because I think it will be helpful for us as a new committee, but also for others to know how this works. Thank you, Dr. Darty. Mr. Robinson, we have a great field trip to approve. You do. Uh, <laughs> Move to approve the Coolidge Science Team trip to the National Science Competition at the University of Nebraska in May. Is there a second? Second. second. Is, there a, uh, is there? Are there? Is there? Discussion? Congratulations to the team. Congratulations yeah. to the team and best of luck. All those in favor? Motion carries 6 0. Uh, we have another donation to accept, Mr. Robinson? Uh, move to accept a, a donation in the amount of $1,800 from the Friends of Reading Football to be used to support a coaching assistant for the 2014 season. There's a second. I'll second that. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Is that 14 correct? I have a question. Yes, it is correct. Yes. Okay. Can this I? was, uh, it was, it was missed in there, their bookkeeping, so this is, uh, making up for an assistant that worked very hard to help support the team over the, the fall season. Oh, okay. So, Mr. Robinson. So, did he not get paid until now, or? 
As with any donation funded assistant, we don't pay them until the donation is, is received and accepted by the committee, yes. So he has not been paid. Oh my goodness. It's a good rule. <laughs> Further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? The motion carries 6 0. We have minutes to approve, Mr. Robinson. Uh, move to approve the open session minutes dated March 26, 2015. Is there a second? Second. Just um, there was one change. Um, there actually were not any Medco students that went to the Medco lobby day because of both snow days mm -hmm. and testing. So I've already talked to Mrs. Engelson about that. Understood. That Thank was you. a change. Any further discussion on the minutes? There can't be. All those in favor? The motion carries 6 0. Uh, tomorrow, April 7th, is the local election. I urge everyone to get out and vote. Uh, I was remiss to mention in the beginning of the meeting that Mr. Nine was here for office hours this morning, and we did have one visitor, which is always appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Nine, for doing that, and thank you to our visitor. Um, and then the next school committee meeting is April 17th. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Oofa. Anything else on the agenda? Mr. Robinson. I just, I mean, I know others would too. I'd just like to take the opportunity to say thank you. Thank you very and, much. And uh, really, uh, with a heavy heart, you know, you've, uh, we've enjoyed working with you. For, thank you. I guess eight years. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor to serve Reading, and it's, uh, it's been one of the nicer things in my life. So thank you very much. You. We got, uh, Dr. Doherty. Um, traditionally, we do give a school committee member when they're leaving a chair. Mr. Caruso does not want a chair, but he has. Not that he wouldn't like a chair, he just kind right. of. Yeah, okay. He, so, but he has requested something else, so we are in the process of getting that for him. Thank you very much. What was the request? Yeah, what was a the request? Vote. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomas for my kids. <laughs> no, it's um, reading, uh, reading attire. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, I we will be getting it. that. Thank you. It's on order. Thank you very much. I, I also want to thank you for all of the support you have given our, our community and our school district it's been a and pleasure. our children. Thank you, Dr. Dory. It's been a pleasure. All right. Let, oh. Do you have anything to say? Uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I wrote something really good, but it's so fast that it will be ridiculous. I want to thank the residents of Reading for allowing me to serve on the committee for the past nine years. It's been an honor to represent my fellow residents. I'd like to thank the many teachers and administrators and staff that I've had the pleasure of meeting with and working with over the years. Our teachers are the heart and soul of our schools. They work extremely hard in an ever-changing educational landscape that continues to place more and more responsibilities on their shoulders. Every teacher I have interacted with, either through school committee or as a parent, has reaffirmed my belief that Reading is the absolute best place to raise our children. A little corny, but I'd like to thank my wife, Andrea, for giving me the opportunity to give back to a town that we both care for very deeply. People have often asked how I was able to find the time to be part of this committee, and the answer is, I married an amazing woman. <laughs> so thank you, and, uh, and go Rockets. Excellent. Nice job. All right, I'm tearing up. I'm tearing up. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> right. Do I have a move? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, I, apparently, um, <laughs> if the committee would ever decide to get together and watch some of the basketball game, I'm mm -hmm. supposed to announce that. So the committee might get together <laughs> at a certain place in Reading to watch the basketball game and, and celebrate a successful school committee meeting. There you go. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Thank second. you. A second. All those second. in favor. We're adjourned. Great job. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you.